Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Glorio Chat, the best anime podcast on the internet. I feel like we've been recording nonstop this week. It's you uh, guys yeah. have been. You guys have been here with me, so it's it's been a gauntlet to be sure. Yeah, we just we just wrapped up uh, Neon Genesis Evangelio, our mm-hmm. Evangelion podcast, the end which, of Evangelio. Yes, which had we did a big double episode, so we had to record that, and that should be out by the time you're listening to this. So uh, we had that. We have this one. I mean, you guys are going to have a. Uh, an interesting episode of Legend of the Glorio Heroes to uh, record. It's always <laughs> interesting. Yes. You no, know, I can, we that's that's the that's the Glorio guarantee <laughs> that we can uh, <laughs> we can always assure our listeners of. So everybody stay tuned for that one cuz that's going to be a good one. But uh but yeah, we're here today for the Glorio chat of course to talk about mm-hmm. anime sort of Sword chat, of. three houses. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, just by way of introductions, if you're not tired of the sound of her voice at this point, uh, I'm Jell, and today we have Iro. Still here. Still here, and we have G. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad, I'm validated, you know, I'm honored to know that uh, people will look back on this day and know that uh, that that uh, my choices, my decisions. Uh, we're on the right side of history. <laughs> uh, we we live in a Christ. better Fodlin, thanks to uh, thanks to my efforts, thanks to the, t- thanks to the horse I backed. We live in a better Fodlin. Yeah. So, what was the name of the horse Marianne talks to? It's like Sir Dorte, Dorte or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the best <laughs> horse to back. So we did we did talk quite a bit of Fire Emblem last episode, and at that point. I was about halfway through the game. I think, G, you were maybe a little over halfway through the, through your route because you're on you were on the longest route. Yes, and I, right, I was right. kind of just getting started, uh, and having now all of us completed our routes, I feel like we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah, so <laughs> um, spoiler yes. warning for yes, anyone so. playing that game. Yeah, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna deep dive a bit into the uh, the fire the the whole back half of Fire Emblem and the twists and turns that takes. And then, uh, you know, time permitting, we'll see how much anime we get to talk about. But there are a couple things that we want to talk about anime-wise as well. So yeah. that'll be the, the episode this week. So let's uh, let's dive into it. And let's talk <laughs> some more <laughs> Fire Emblem. Sure, so, yeah. So to be clear, each of us did a different route. We picked a yes. different house. Almost entirely unplanned, except for you, Iroh. I no, you... I, I was absolutely planned. Yes. So you were the, yeah, so you, you played Blue Lions specifically because everybody else had picked everything. I thought it was interesting uh, Chris and I chose different routes because we, that was not planned, and that's all based decision-based. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. But, uh, we'll, we'll get into that aspect of it. But, um, but yeah, having, having finished a playthrough, I'm just really impressed – with the the scope and ambition of what they've tried to do with this game and i think mostly succeeded um yeah I, sure yeah i, I think, I, I I think the, the variety of what happens in the roots which they all take you know very different paths um and the what i think more impressively to me is how they've used how they kind of manipulate the information to only tell you so much on each route and how much that affects your perspective to almost make you believe that your route is the right one, even though you're <laughs> conflicting yeah. with, you know, the, the, the path of the other routes. And I mean, there's some variation there because like I said, some of the actual events are different and even some of the characters take different turns based on what happens. But yeah, it's just it's it's such an ambitious concept, and I can't. I'm hard pressed to think of like too many other examples of games that have pulled off something like this. So, right. Um, totally. I I really appreciate that there is no single route that's the the like golden route. You know, that's, yeah, definitely. That's the quote unquote best. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll see like, what the, right. they, they have announced DLC for this game. That is true. So, um, for all we know, we'll get our Golden Route DLC in like 2020. But for yeah. now, 
But like Faith kind of fell into the pitfall of the uh, Revelations route, where everybody teams up against the common threat is like blatantly the uh, most correct. I guess. Right. Well, I think even more than that, uh, to kind of echo what you guys are saying, I think the thing that Three Houses does really well is that it presents um, th- three, well, actually four, like, very, like, not technically divergent viewpoints on, like, you know, ideology, but you, you are presented with four different, like, viewpoints and perspectives on, like, you know, kingship and like nationhood, <laughs> you know, how, what, what makes, <clears throat> what makes a good leader and what are good goals worth striving for, for the sake of, you know, creating a, in your eyes, like a just and righteous nation. Right. Different views and, on the political situation of Poland. And yes. Yes. Like, e- like, like each of the leaders kind of come to their own conclusions about like, uh, who is this land's greatest foe and who are its greatest champions? And, I think the thing it does really well is, you know, again, each of us have only played one route. Euro, my, I understand you have started a Golden Deer route, but yeah. you are still in the section that is identical to the Blue yes. Lions route. So, you know, but uh, you, you get this feeling that, like, this game is, like, much more even-handed in the way it portrays, you know, its, uh, its various factions. You know, I think that, obviously, I think for better or worse, some factions are more popular than others. <laughs> but I think, you know, but uh, I think that as far as the game itself goes, I really do appreciate it pre- presenting each, you know, it, it, let me just get in here. It does the thing that I like about some other, uh, about a certain uh, legendary <laughs> 1988 science fiction OVA oh boy. in which it presents all sides as, if not necessarily valid or right, at least every side has like rational and like understandable motivations for their actions. Right. And as you said, Jill, some of that is because, like, of the information they're presented. You know, like, I don't want to get into full spoiler territory here, but, like, I think that, like, based on what I have learned about Edelgard and the Black Eagles route, I think that route, and I think Edelgard in that route is o- is operating on, like, if not false information, then, like... Faulty premises. <laughs> extremely incomplete information. Like, she has arrived at certain conclusions that she never would have arrived at if certain characters had just told her like actually this is what's going on but then at the same time in my golden deer route i am sure like i am going to be more sympathetic to certain characters because they got to present their viewpoint to me like on their own terms you know, i did not force it out of them at sword point so like and i think compared to what you were saying Eero, about like th- comparing this to fates i think in many ways three houses is like the actual Yes. I think Three Houses is the actual, like, platonic ideal of what maybe Fates was trying to be, but, like, so dreadly, dreadfully failed at, because, like... Yeah. Fates, the, Fates fell in the pit, pit hole so that Three Houses could use it as a bridge. Yeah, but I mean, more than that, I, think, like, I mean, Fates messed up on, like, multiple levels. I mean, like, yeah. you know, you talk about the revelations around, but I would even get into, like... The two the, conflicting yeah. sides are like so poorly done. Because yes. for those of you unfamiliar with uh, Fire Emblem Fates, this was the last, no, actually second to last, the second of the three 3DS Fire Emblem games that were released on the 3DS. And in this one, you chose one of two factions. Uh, they were Hoshido and Nor. Uh, Hoshido was basically not Japan, and right. uh, you know the uh, the, the, co- the lovely peace loving, you know. Uh... Japan, white, colored side, or you could pick the uh, Conquest side. Which was uh, Nor, which were basically just, like, every, like, evil stereotype about Dirty Gaijin that the Japanese could come up with and, like, concentrated into a single faction. You know, like, you had, yeah, so, so you basically had, like, the Hoshido side, which was portrayed as, like, benevolent and just and all the defensive and, like, you know, justified in their war of defense against the, like, imperialistic conquesting Norians, you know, who were portrayed as, like, these black armored wearing, you know, kind of more traditional Fire Emblem European fantasy uh, inspired faction. And the problem here is that, again, you know, I actually don't have too much issue with the idea that maybe one faction is portrayed more, you know, benevolent than the other. The issue that Fates ran into is it did not even make an effort to justify or rationalize the actions of the Conquest route. Right. You know, I think that you compare that, like, you compare the Conquest route to Edelgard's route in the Black Eagles, which is, again, another route that takes a similar tone of, like, 
you are siding with a violent imperialistic power that is uh, quite like comfortable with using some extremely morally dubious methods to achieve its goals. But you are acquainted with its characters and you are given their like very real and sometimes quite valid motivations. And I think that makes it work so much better than what fates did. Yeah. And I, 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 you know, I wouldn't say it fully succeeds all the time, but there is an effort there that succeeds to, to a certain degree that, you know, like, I mean, with Edelgard, you know, having played the actual Edelgard route, like, you know, I joke about Edelgard did nothing wrong, but in reality, she has done some things wrong. Uh, Edelgard has and, done. Uh, <laughs> the, I the, mean, uh, but, the <laughs> but, 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 like, from her per- perspective, you can kind of understand why she came to those conclusions and took the, some of the actions that she took. Whether yes. or not you can justify them in, in your you know your in your own mind or whatever is another another question which we'll probably get into a bit but uh but you know there, there's there's a conversation to be had there right so mm-hmm. yes um, yeah there's more of a conversation to be had which is already like infinitely more interesting i think you know i think it you know the the, the meme version of this discourse is, is of course the very like harry potter like hogwarts house style rivalry <laughs> that right. seems to happen between the three houses you know I will, I will point out. I will point out, based on my perspective, it seems like all the beefing comes from the Black Eagles fans. I feel like <laughs> I feel like Blue Lions and Golden Deer are like content to just chill where they are. We have a chip on is, our shoulder because everybody's think, saying we're Nazis. Uh. Well, I, think that, that's the thing. I feel like the Black Eagles fans are always the ones. <laughs> like if you ever like in every social group and every single like group I have seen and interacted with, where multiple people have, have careful, played I'm throwing three that houses, here, but, yeah. and like you know have have picked up three houses and have picked different houses, I feel like it is always the Black Eagle players, like especially especially the people who would like call themselves unironically Edelgard stands. Like it always feels like those people are the ones who are like. Oh, you picked uh, you picked Golden Deer, huh? Hmm, that's interesting. Or oh, Blue Lions, huh? Must be fun playing the cops, which I think is ridiculous because Edelgard is the one who is clearly a cop I of mean, the three. Yeah. So. Ingrid's pretty much a cop, though. Ingrid is a cop, but she is not one of the lords. You know? I mean, you, you, I, I will you can have a cop in your faction, but I'm talking about like the, <laughs> the, the representing lords themselves. Like, mm. yeah, I think it is absurd to me that the Black Eagles could, uh, could 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 fling this accusation. I would at uh, at anyone else. I would think at least sixty percent of the people who are uh, defending Edelgard. It's just because they wanted to hook her up with female Byleth, and they want. I mean, it's be- yes. want her to step on them, but um, yes, it's because she's hot. Yes, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> so there is that factor, I suppose. But uh, yes, yes. But, uh... So what I want, what I thought we might do then is maybe talk a little bit about each of our own experiences going down our roots here, and <laughs> sure, we'll sure. kind of feel out. So we've already put up the spoiler warning. If you have not played Fire Emblem and you intend to, don't listen to this, but I know, I, I know at the very least, Iroh has already started new game plus. I don't know if G you're going to do it. I don't foresee myself ever I, having time on it, but I would like to, but yeah. time is the very real. Right. Thing. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll try to draw some balance here of, you know, what we know, what we don't know here on what we're going to spoil, but, in general, if you haven't played the game yet, for all I know, I'll drop the new game plus in two days to get back to judgment. That might so, not be. Yeah. You should play might that not be game. A bad plan, it's, uh, so. Speaking of anime as fuck video games, uh, <laughs> then we'll do a judgment anime, podcast. Nobody has given me the segue to get talk about <laughs> judgment in this podcast, but y'all should motherfucking play judgment because that game is basically just like fucking. What if Phoenix Wright like was also an extremely accomplished hand to hand fighter, and it's fucking amazing. <laughs> yes, so we'll have to check that out. But uh, but yeah, let's start with um with the Azure Moon route, which is the Blue Lions. Uh, this is the one Iro played. Yes, and I. I um just so going on initial impressions. This is the one that I thought was going to be the lawful good route, but maybe not so much. No, it's. I've been describing it as the most vanilla Fire Emblem route, because uh, that's the way it feels to me. What does that mean? It's very, here's your deposed prince who must fight with his ragtag squad to like regain his country and fight against injustice and all of that stuff. There's a right. red and a green knight, 
Uh, <laughs> there's an older older gentleman knight who joins you as a free promote. Uh, <laughs> only in Blue Lions, like. Yeah, I mean, I think that I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't think it's necessarily fair to say, oh, Blue Lions is the generic route because I think all three I, I, routes. I, that's not what I meant. I don't right. mean to say generic. Okay. Just like just, I, it's the closest right, right. to and, traditional Fire Emblem is what you're saying. Like, as as someone who's played previous Fire Emblem games, like it's the one that made me go most like, oh, this is a Fire Emblem game. Right. Isn't it? I, d- I just wanted you to know. clarify that because I think that like you know I have not played Blue Lions, but I think Blue Lions is the next route I would play if I get around to a new game plus and based on what you told me, I mean, you said that, yes, a lot of the plot beats are very similar, but Mm -hmm. I thought that like, I think that like, some of the, like, I think think, think we'll get into this stuff. uh, Yeah. Cause I think we'll get into this as a whole, as all three of us talk about our routes, but I think each route kind of has a different focus narratively. Yeah. Like, and I think that blue lions route is very focused on uh, its Lord. Right. Yeah. Like like Dimitri is the, the heart and soul of that route. Uh, yeah. it's all about him, basically. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why the joke has often been that, like, uh, the Blue Lines route is the, like, it is the Otome healing, oh, like, absolutely. dating sim route. If, where, I was, like, if I was a lady and was into men, I would be screwing Dimitri's brains out. Right, like, I think, I feel like I heard, everything I hear about that route is very much about, like, <laughs> oh, like, especially if you're play, playing female Baleth, is like, oh, it's all about, like, their love healing him. And, you know, basically, you know. Absolutely. That would have been my plan on New Game Plus, is to be Lady, lady <laughs> you Baleth know? and just, uh... And, I mean, you know, like, you know, let's be real, I get it, like, po- time skip Dimitri is very hot, you know, he is, uh... <laughs> He's also... Damage. <laughs> he's seen some shit. So you're what you're telling me is he's very hot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm not. I'm. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna like you know fucking like poo mm-hmm. on anybody's like you know like uh, fantasies or what they want. But let's be real. Dimitri is very much that fantasy. You know, he is hot, but he's also damaged. And you, the player character, can heal him with your love you know it's i, I mean mm-hmm. it's it's it, but it is dimitri's kind of turn that puts the spin on if we're talking about getting away from traditional fire emblem right because he's he, he he's like bloodthirsty yeah he'll crush the crush the man's skull he's not like uh, he's not you know like, you know high-minded noble lord guy leading his well, he, people he back kinda, to it he like because like he's totally is that pre-time skip right and then, well, one... I mean, is it, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I was like, isn't much of Dimitri's struggle is that he wants to live up to that ideal, mm-hmm. but like he has too much of that. He is very much a victim of rage inside him. Too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he's a victim of his basis in- instincts, and like I think this thing I want, I want to get into because we're talking about this now is I think that one thing I can kind of appreciate about the three routes or the four routes is that. I think that all of the Lord's characterization actually remains fairly consistent across all the routes and so what makes it interesting is like the turns they take because you the player character has chosen one side over another yeah. you know like in my route in golden deer you know we're not going to get into my route just yet but like dimitri gives me a very different impression than the one you get in the blue lines route because in my route he does not have a player character to like be a moderating calming influence <laughs> so like it is the dimitri that has completely lost himself to his rage and in my route you know not to get into details but for better or worse he never comes up for air you know it right. that, that moment uh, never happens and like it's interesting to think like oh like that that is what would happen if the player character was not on his side in uh in my route, it's the exact opposite, where or like he never fell. Yeah, <laughs> right. so he he like he doesn't have the eye patch in my route, and he's I don't see him much, but the couple times I see him, he seems pretty much in line with the, the guy I knew in the mon- at the monastery. Right. So like, yeah, it's pretty interesting because it, and it's part of it is how has you know the player character affected them, but also like we've said, the events turn out different just based on like it has to right like not everybody can win the same battle right so like mm-hmm. what happens if this faction wins this battle well we're going to go in a different direction you know yeah so, um right again that's part of just like the the crazy ambition of this game that they somehow managed yeah, to uh <laughs> pull yeah off. i mean you know maybe we might as well get into it now i am actually really impressed by like what i assume has to be like the programming modularity of this game oh yeah because like Every for those who have not played the game, 
every single line is voiced. Every single right. line of dialogue in this v- game OVO. is all is full VO. Like not not just your like persona style, like they just get voiced when it matters. Right. No, they're voiced twenty four seven. And like there are things that happen. There are like like you know, we some of us play the same mission, but like under different circumstances. You know, there are these these things in the game called paralogs, which are like character focused side missions. And like some of us here have played the same paralog involving the same side characters, but because of the, the highly like changed context of it, they have ha- they have to say completely different things about the context of the mission, or like. After you do certain stuff, like, you know, maybe you kill a certain character, they will specifically reference that character and say, we killed that character. And it's like, it's, and you know, when you recruit, uh, so so in this game, you can recruit members from other houses to your house, you know, if you fulfill certain requirements. And like those characters, they will say specifically different things about like the fact that like they are now with your faction, sometimes fighting against their home faction. And it's like, Holy crap, how many lines? The amount of permutations they had to, like... And I I can't think of any that were, like, totally off the mark. Like, I haven't found any situations where, like... Even some of, like, the supports that, like, you could get, like, pre-time skip, if you get them Mm -hmm. post-time skip, even those... I, even some of those I saw had, like, a line thrown in that acknowledges the difference between you know it's it's fucking wild yeah like i i did it like you know so like i did like a c-level support with a character pre time skip and then post time skip like they were like man remember five years ago when blah 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 and i was like how did you, you accounted for that because like you can do that support pre time skip right. and it's like but they thought to throw uh, in and it's and it's it might have only just been a little wild you know remember five years line but the fact that they even thought about that was just crazy i think it's i mean i think that's crazy because like i mean because here's the thing, right? Like, we're not trying to act like there's, like, some real fucking, like, programming wizardry. Of course, there are, like, you know, you know, what ifs and thens, you know, it's, like, right. style, it's less like, like programming, programming where like, somebody had to map this all out, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, like, but not all that, but the sheer scale of it. Yeah. Like, if this were just purely written dialogue, right. it's a little bit easier. But, like, because it's all voiced as well, it's, like, it's just, like, the scale is so impressive. Like... Like, I feel like it's just ridiculous. It's absurd to me, like, that this game is, like, as, like, in this regard, as technically polished as it is. Because, like, I gotta be honest, man, like, fucking Koei Tecmo is not a company that strikes me as, like, <laughs> yeah, the, particularly the... competent or, like, focused. Yeah, but that... And, like, I guess... That that all takes the hit in the graphics and performance, which which is not good, but it's, like, probably the, the least impactful. Right, right. But I guess it's, like, man, it's just, like, you know, we don't think of this game. I don't think people tend to think of this game as like a triple A game, but like in terms of the scope of its writing. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like this game is more involved than like most like big budget games I've played in the last few years. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyway, sorry about that, Eero. If you have any other <laughs> remaining thoughts, <laughs> <about> <laughs> <three> lines, <Ralph. laughs> do you have anything to say about what we were talking about ten minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just had to like get my look. We're getting our props out for this game. In general, I, th- I do though, think that like, needed to be said. Yes, because like, that's yeah. that's a very. I, I, it's I'm again hard pressed to think of any other good or very many other good examples of that ever happening, um, to that scale. But uh, yeah, Iro. I did want to ask you the most important question. Who did you hook up with and who, and who hooked up in your epilogues? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You got to tell us that. Mary Dorothea. Um, okay, how'd that go? A good choice. Uh, she's, she's cool. Cool, cool. All right. I mean, they do, like a... they do got to marry Mercedes so okay. they could re- revive Duster culture. Okay. Very important. That's that's nice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm glad to do uh, glad to do got to do that because uh, he doesn't show up much in my route. What little yeah, he does... I've uh, I've heard some shit about uh, who to do in other routes. So yeah, I man to do. He seemed like a good guy, and I wish I could have helped him in my route. To do but, is a uh, good guy, as, as it know, turns out. Um, certain events conspire to drive him in, in certain directions. Yeah. In the other routes. Uh... <laughs> He doesn't. I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, Blue Lines Root is very concerned with uh, Dimitri, and like the game just ends once you f- defeat the Empire and well, all that. Like, 
I think all of the I, I think if there's anything we could throw against the game, at least if your route and my route are any indication, hmm. the games end a little abruptly. <laughs> yeah, like, I have to wonder if like, they're setting up for DLC because they're. Yeah, maybe. There's a, I wonder. There's something very like. I can almost see specifically what the DLC would be for my route. <laughs> well, well, if you see, see the problem, Gel, is that would be DLC for your route. Us over here to Golden Deer, we already took care of that. We got it handled. We uh, we <clears throat> yes. we already saved the world in the Golden Deer route. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> yeah, so my my route basically ends where we're about to do that. Um. Oh. So it seems like I don't couldn't know get the job done. I guess. About. Yeah. So maybe that's going to be our our DLC uh, for 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 uh, I don't the know, but, uh, but yeah. Anyway, one blue blue lions. One question I do have uh, for yes. you, Eero, uh Other than yeah, any any pairing ups, is uh, uh, just checking from last time. Any characters? Who are the highlights of your house? Or are there any characters that you you start out liking and still loved at the end? Are there any characters you did not like at first, but maybe they started to kind of turn around, you know, by by um, the end? Or were Felix they all Sil- sh- Felix and Sylvain are pieces of shit. Okay, uh, now and forever from the yeah. very beginning, I hated those two, and I still think they suck. Yep, that sounds um, about right. <laughs> Dudu and Mercedes are great. Dudu is the best secret best husbando in that game. I wish Mercedes uh, had a better dub VA, but oh yeah, to do cooks, to do gardens, to do can hold us choke point single handedly. Um, yeah, dude is tough. I gotta say, even as a guy with Raphael in his house, uh, to do is the uh, yeah. he's a tough <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. Um, shout outs to uh, Annette and Mercedes. Yeah, uh, sure. Merce- Mercedes is just too good for this world. Takes care of everybody in the house. And Annette is just like happy to be there, no matter what. She's happy to be, there. yeah. See, that's why. That's why uh, I recruited her to Golden Deer. She felt yeah, like a Golden Deer just, suited just to me. Cheery and yeah. like excited to be a Garrig Mock and excited to do anything. Yeah. Uh, and, dude, who did you- and Ingrid's a fucking cop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like it's a little, it's a little like. When you realize she just had to run damage control for, for total dirtbags, Felix and Sylvain her whole life, it kind of makes sense. But she's just so boring. That's a, it's a shame because yeah, I I did like her as a character starting yeah. out. Was, oh, cool, like a cool lady knight, you know? Yeah, but then yeah. It's like man, I, yeah, she. I is, like they didn't uh, know what to do with her. Like right, she, she's pulled in so many different directions. That's yeah, like, like like she is pulled between like having to be the fun police of her like house. Mm-hmm. But then also she has her like arranged marriage sub storyline, yeah. and then she also has the like I want to be a lady knight and like you know blah blah. blah. Yeah. It's like it's I a shame story, because, because like I think I think you can have a multifaceted character, but I think it's just that she is uh, kind of pulled in too many directions. You have a, you have a limited yeah. amount of storytelling time for each character right. in this game. I mean, right. and her her best scene is if you meet her at the Goddess Tower after the school dance. And it turns out she's only there because she snuck out uh, of the party to eat a whole cake by herself. That's where, great. Where nobody could watch. Just like uh, the image of her just like in that clock <laughs> tower fucking holding just like an entire uncut cake <laughs> in her hands. Just being right. like, oh, professor, what are you doing here? <laughs> you need to take half the cake and promise not to tell anybody I was here. Uh, that is pretty good. Yeah. Good times. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Blue Lions, Blue Lions is all right. Um. Dimitri is the star of the house, pretty much. And I would like, there's a lot of backstory stuff with him and like Edelgard that I am baffled is not mentioned at all <laughs> if you hang out with Edelgard. Um, do, does the, uh, so does your, where, where does your route end? It's, it's, uh, you beat it, you beat the Empire basically. Yeah, you beat the Empire, and Fodland is united under the name of Fargus, and everything is happy now. And even though you save Lady, Re- they're like you save Lady Rhea from the Empire. She's and you get zero explanations about what the fuck is the deal with the Church, right? At all. So let me and understand. She I don't know have, anything. She doesn't even have dialogue at the no, end of your round. Show up. It's the ending crawl, and they're like, "You saved Lady Rhea from her imprisonment in Enbar." And it's fascinating. He stepped down as archbishop, and you oh. became the new archbishop. Oh, and hmm. okay. everything is good now. And I'm just like, 
hang on, I supported with Sedeth, and he told me that once we save Lady Rhea, they'll tell me everything. Turns out Sedeth was already... Why aren't you telling me anything? Sedeth Turns has, out that support uh, was rooting exclusively for the Golden Deer route, apparently. Sedeth has so. a lot of secrets. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So I guess let's uh, we'll, we'll go on to your route, G, the Verdant Wind for the, uh, yes. the Golden Deer route. And uh, yeah, we, we, this is the one we joked was these are the this is the fun group, um, <laughs> right? The meme house, so to speak. You know? Like, okay, me being like a, a couple months into Golden Deer, like Claude. I don't know how I feel about Claude, man. Like, Claude's got mysteries. Claude, Claude is a guy who would like he'd invite you to. <laughs> He'd show up at your house, and he'd be like, Hey, so uh, I found your spare house key under the flower pot. Uh, if you want, you can look at my keychain to make sure I didn't make a copy of it. Because <laughs> I totally didn't make a he copy would, of it. <laughs> you know, well, he's you like, know. Oh, see, you can see that I don't. Um, you know, I mean, you know, Claude is... Uh... He's a very he's a very jovial fellow. He's very, he's very, uh, you know, he's very, um, you know, he's, he, he, he certainly, he's very, uh, what's the word? He's very friendly, you know, he's, uh-huh. uh, he's very affable. Um, uh, but, you know, the way they describe Claude in the very beginning of that game is not inaccurate, where he smiles with his mouth, but not with his eyes. Uh-huh. I feel um, like Claude would know my driver's license number off the top of his head. And uh, yes, but the thing I is, that just, like, why do you know that he would just laugh it off. But the thing is that Claude would be doing it for your own good. <laughs> oh yes, uh, that, that makes it okay. <laughs> the, the thing about Claude is that, like, at least you know, at least in my route where he had me as a, I like. Okay, so the thing with Claude that I actually really love is that, like, Claude actually represents like what I think is a very interesting and important like mindset and ideology that I feel like is kind of like highly underexplored in in fantasy fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, not to get into any like too spoiler territory, but fucking this is gonna be a spoiler. Uh, you know, Claude is an outsider. You know, he is right, uh, yeah. he is both a native of Fothlin, but also very much not. You know, he uh, he has mixed heritage. You know, he is uh, his Al- father. Almiran, right? His father is Al- his father is the Almiran king, actually. <laughs> um, and okay. and his mother is uh, one of the scions of the Regan House, the kind of leading house of the alliance. You know, he is, uh, in many ways, he is genetically predisposed to become the great uniter of of the continent. And if you're because, just going by pure, like, lineage. Yes, by pure lineage. But, narrative lineage power. Yes, yes. But the thing is, like, Claude kind of goes beyond that, right? Is like, the thing is that because as an outsider, he kind of looks at Fodlin, he looks at this very insular country with a very dogmatic religion, and he is the one who comes from the outside and says, basically, there has to be another way. You know, like, like this system is not sustainable. This system, like... The three payments of 1999. Uh... <laughs> and I like that he kind of brings this, like, o- outsider perspective of, like, you know, th- like, I mean, like, you know, if we're really getting down to it, like, Claude's real goal in the games is to create his globalist utopia, you know? Right. Like, like even to, even with Dimitri, once, like, Dimitri becomes the good prince, you're still fighting to kind of uphold the establishment. Right. Like, the thing Claude actually wants to do is kind of tear down the status quo. You know, not maybe to the same extent as Edelgard. You know, he's not looking to burn the country to the ground and, you know... You know, Only the strong will rise from the ashes. <laughs> but like he is looking to get rid of the old borders, the borders of the old world. You know, like he, as someone who ha- has experienced discrimination and racism, he he sees that like you know, as someone who has experienced multiple like uh, uh, countries and cultures, he is a person who intrinsically believes that actually humanity can come can come together despite its differences, and mm-hmm. that is kind of his grand plan for the world, and. Related to all that, like, because of his, like, you know, contentious, like, uh, hereditary status, he does feel this pressure to, you know, put up an affectation and, like, not speak about his past. Keep but, people at arm's length. Yes, yes, you know, but uh, I will say, as much as a joke, and I feel like, you know, the, the thing with Claude is actually, is, is like, I think it's just a, like, you know, again, this is not to, like, you know you know, like, uh, poo-poo on the other lords. I just think that, I think the reason I like Claude is because I think Claude in general just has, like, a grander picture of the world than the other two lords. And so Mm -hmm. I am willing to forgive some of his, like, 
Yes, like Claude is the person. Like here's the yes, Claude would memorize your debit card number, <laughs> but like he would never ever use it unless uh-huh. like it was to save your life. You know, uh-huh. like he, he would. Or okay, fine. Maybe he would buy you. He maybe he would buy like twelve pizzas and have them delivered <laughs> to your dorm. He might do that, but he would only do that because he knows you're a noble and that you're loaded. He would never do that to his commoner friends. You know, uh-huh. like he. <laughs> but uh, right. I don't know, speaking to the Golden Deer house as a whole and the route as a whole, um, you know, I think that, you know, again, I think that the stereotype is that they are the meme house, they are the goofy house, like, and they are to some extent. I think that, like, the Golden Deer have a much, I think, a much warmer social, like, dynamic than the other two houses. Yeah, I mean, if you're comparing to the other two. More casual. Yeah, let, let me put it this way. Nobody in any of the Golden Deer supports says... Hey man, hey, what's up? I'm gonna kill you. Support rank up. <laughs> like nobody, like nobody is like threatening to kill anybody. Like they have some misunderstandings. They have fights. You know, Lawrence really needs to learn to tone it down a few notches. But like, but, but he's Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. Yeah, the, and the, the the scion of House Gloucester. But who that's will what I even mean. Unify like, even, the alliance. <laughs> even a guy like Lawrence, who is like a total fucking like a foppish creep at the beginning of the game, <laughs> right? Like, you compare him to, like, the other, like, nobles in the other houses, mainly Ferdinand and Sylvain, and, like, Lorenz comes off so much better than those two in comparison. Like, like, Lorenz like, Weber and Sylvain. Like, look, I'm not saying it's a high bar, but I'm just saying, like, compared to, like, the other nobles, like, even even right, the, right. like, uppity, like, arrogant noble in the Golden Deer house is still, like, way more personable and, like, you know like like you know just likable as a character and i think i like that dynamic i think it's like a really fun dynamic because of the mix of nobles and commoners i feel like their supports their conversations kind of get into a lot more like kind of personal like personal issues rather than like the grander issues of like you know nation and statehood it's like it's like oh i want to be an artist but my parents don't want me to or like you know, hey, like, my parents died, and it's just me and my sister, and I'm too stupid to run the family business, so I'm just gonna lift a bunch of weights and become hella strong <laughs> so I can be a knight, you know? And it's like, and it's like, they're, they're still very real concerns, you know? Like, you know, the character I just mentioned, Raphael, he's still very concerned about, like, what family he has left and making sure he can take care of them. But, like, it's just that his supports are more about, like, how can I best support, like, my family rather than, like, how can I save this ailing nation and save it from its own destruction or, or what have you? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think in general, I do like that vibe. I think it really works out well. And I think it does mm-hmm. offer kind of a good alternative to the more, uh, yeah, I just, I, I find their, that's, that's why I recruited all of the golden deer students. To yeah. My they're house. great. They're great. I find their, that their kind of place in the story. Interesting. Cause I feel like there's, very direct, easy reasons to draw lines of conflict between uh, the kingdom and the empire. But, you know, seeing where they fit in is, uh, and I, I feel like maybe their role changes more from route to route than the other two. I that, I think that's a good way to put it, because I think for better or worse, the alliance route is some, t- or the alliance in general is sometimes seen as the third wheel of this conflict. But like, you know, I think that as like, good pieces of fiction about nations go, I think that they actually do a good job of justifying the alliances like state and all three of the routes, because as a third party, there is actually a vested interest in then the other two parties to either subsume them or destroy them because like right. they can tip the balance. They might be the weakest of the three nations conventionally, but like you have, you still want them on your side or not on the other, right. you know, not on the enemy side. Right. And that kind of, you know, so in many ways, because I think typically the the Empire and King, at least on my route, Empire and Kingdom were being depicted as military, military wise being equal and that, you know, the alliance going one way or the other could or or not going one way uh, could completely change the direction of the war. Right. So totally, totally. Mm -hmm. And, And so I think that, like, in many ways, maybe it's not as grand of a reason, but simply the desire to not be destroyed by the other two nations actually <laughs> is, in some ways, a very real, grounded, like, motivation sure. for, like, a nascent nation-state. Um, 
But uh, but yeah, I'd say you know in terms of the route specifically, I really enjoyed it. I I'd say the focus of of the Golden Deer route is the world building of the setting. I think that like based on what you guys have described, I think that for better or worse, the Golden Deer route has the most like quote unquote like neutral and complete view of the setting and the history <laughs> of its like primary movers and shakers. I think in some ways by being an outsider, like observing, you know, this conflict that has raged on for like centuries or, or millennia, like you're kind of given a perspective on this conflict that like I think that the other two don't because like the mm-hmm. Blue Lions route is primarily concerned with just the preservation of its nationhood. And I think the again, I think the Black Eagles route has an incomplete picture because they have been fed I think they have been fed biased information. All right, G, so, <laughs> G, I, G, you don't need to tell me what has been said about the church, but do they explain the origin of the church? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, they the the origins of the church, the history of the setting, the origin of the ten houses, all of it is explained in the Golden Deer uh, route, and uh, some of it may surprise you. <laughs> it's uh, I was uh, genuinely caught off guard actually by some of the reveals they they pulled in in the Golden Deer route, where uh, they explain to you like. Where did Saint Saros come from? Where did the relics come from? Where did the ten nobles come from? Like, right, right. Because you know. like, I'm left with questions such as if Flane is secretly Saint Sethleen, as is implied in multiple supports, and has the crest of Saint Sethleen, how? But also does not have any descendants. How does Linhard also have the crest of Sethleen? Yeah, that's a good you question. Know, I'm like, these are the kind of questions I have. Also, what's up with Slain? What's, <laughs> what's up with Slain? There is some interesting what, stuff. What is, and, quote unquote, the truth about the church? You know, play the Golden Deer route. Yeah, the last 30 yeah. minutes to find out. Yep. Um, but yeah, that the, the route takes some turns. I think that it takes maybe the most, like, fucking wild turns of the three routes based on my knowledge. Well, you said there's like, dubstep at one point. <laughs> you, told, you told me there was dub. Yeah, so not to spoil anything, but there is a dubstep track in the Golden yeah. Deer route that I don't think is heard in the other two routes, <laughs> and I think that's fucking wild. Like, like I, I just want to leave those implications at your doorstep and like just think about like what that even means about the Golden Deer yeah. route. And speaking of Flane, since we're going to talk about that stuff, Flane's great. Uh, great. She's not like my favorite character, but she's very good. She's very precious. She has some great support conversations. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that you cannot keep her in the Black Eagles route is probably why I will oh, not play yeah. a Black okay. Eagles route next ah, because I guess that makes sense. The idea of raising a sword against Flane is just so like on so many levels completely unthinkable to me. It is so like <laughs> dastardly, and like the very prospect is so disgusting. I I cannot bring myself to uh, even consider yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I did not enjoy that. In terms of uh, my other supports, uh, I hooked up with Leone because, of course, of course, of course. That was probably the most obvious. Thing I didn't in the think world. she was a very good uh, um, support, though. She just wants to fuck your dad. Yeah, well, look, Leone's got her own thing. I will say that Leone, like, I think Leone suffers the most from like her supports with you are not very good, but I think her supports with other characters uh, are very yeah, good. Yeah. Like, I really do like a lot of her supports with other characters. I think that like. You know, like she's a very familiar archetype. She's like the no nonsense, like commoner tomboy who's like you know frugal and practical. But like, I do like the perspective she brings to a lot of her supports, especially ones with like both other nobles and other commoners. Like, you know, her supports with like guys like you know Ignatz and Raphael. They feel very like they feel very regular people problems to me. Mm-hmm. Like, like these are people who do not have time to be worried about like the fate of the church and like the right. nation. Right, and then her like supports like other nobles, like you know, like Raphael. She kind of offers like, like a a fun kind of more practical mindset. Right. Um, but yes, a lot of her best traits are only fleshed out if you support her with like you know a lot of other yeah, characters. Like she seems fine, but not like, dateable from uh, the main character. Perspective. Yeah, I, I totally understand. I look, I was just following yeah, I my very, following like, I was just following G, my base but, yeah. instincts here. Like, uh-huh. her support with, like, Alois and Shamir, I think, are both very good. Like, yeah, those are good. Like, yeah. I really like her supports with those two, and it's like, again, like, if you do not get those supports, you're going to miss out on, like, I, entire facets yeah. of her character. I think in my in my ending, she was ended up paired with Shamir. 
That's a pretty good pair up. Uh, they, uh, they found the, the greatest mercenary company to ever exist. Or that's something she would do. Yeah. And, uh, uh, in terms of other pairing ups, I did. Um, Bernadetta Caspar is very. Yeah, I cute. got that one too. Uh, it's it's very cute. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> it is the most fucking like I was like yeah all right like this must be one of those like actual uniquely written support epilogues because like what happens in their epilogue could only happen if those two somehow ended up right. together. <laughs> yeah. um, I think Lorenz and Marianne had a very fun and cute epilogue. They do have where, a cute support. I wasn't where, able to uh, max them out, but... I really like Lorenz and Marianne's relationship, and I think their support where Lorenz becomes the king of cows is uh, <laughs> very, very funny. It's very funny to me. Like That is funny. Like Lawrence, so they basically see that because of Marianne's like knowledge of like husbandry and like animal knowledge, like they were able to like vastly expand like the alliance's like export of like prized livestock, leading to like Lorenz becoming known as like the king of livestock. And they said that this title would vex Lorenz for the rest of his <laughs> years. <laughs> it's like, all right, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, a, that's a fitting ending yeah. for him, um, man. Let's see. Somehow, Ignatz and Flane ended up together. Uh, huh. which, I'm sorry, Flane. I'll, I promise I'll do you better next time. <laughs> you don't deserve to end up with someone as fucking lame as Ignatz. Wow, I would but Their support is, in, their, their epilogue is interesting um, in its own kind of unique way. Um, I think it goes, it takes an interesting direction. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Catherine and Schmier ended up becoming battle lesbians together I for the rest of their days. Sure. Like, as, as they do. Um, <laughs> somehow Manuela and, uh, Sedith got hitched. So very happy for All Manuela. Right. You know, uh, uh she's she gonna her hot immortal. Right. She gets her hot, gets hot immortal Debbie God husband. <laughs> The support is actually pretty good. It's I like their good. support. It's fun. Yeah. So I didn't feel like it was too contrived for the two to end up together. Um, Raphael and Hilda basically opened up a knickknacks shop together. Okay. Because um, like their support is about how good Hilda is at making handicrafts. Right. And in like, my in my ending, she opens the first like trade school in Fodland. <laughs> uh, That's pretty good. Yeah, and it's a little smaller scale, but she and Raphael, when they get together, she uh, he runs an inn, and she opens up the most, I guess, the most popular fucking knickknacks tourist shop in all of Fodland or something. Sure, sure. <laughs> Just like people travel from across the country to stay at the inn and buy, I guess, handmade jewelry and amulets and shit. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, uh, the one I actually did kind of like is uh, Claude and... Claude and Petra got together in my epilogue. Sure. And, uh, Pair of the minorities. And... Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. You want to put it like that, yes. <laughs> Maybe not the greatest look. I did, I did like the support, though, because, like, the A support of theirs is Petra basically going, like, I have found myself a suitable husband here in Fodlin. And Claude's like, oh, who's a lucky man? And she's like, I won't be telling him yet. Petra's and, great. Like, and he's like, well... <laughs> And and he's like, well, I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's a very lucky man. And she's like, he will be because even if he says no, I will be tying him up and dragging him back <laughs> to my homeland. Oh, Petra's like, great. <laughs> Claude's like, that will be a very lucky man indeed. <laughs> even luckier. And uh, uh, even yeah. luckier. And uh, they, yes, they basically somehow, despite being like on the opposite sides of the continent, unite Bridget and Elmira, and somehow <laughs> sure, sure, that works out, but, uh, All right. but yes. Yes, very, uh, overall quite pleased with the... Uh, and, and your route was I, the longest, because you go some places at the end. Motherfucker, my route was 95 hours yeah. long. How, how long was yours, <laughs> right, I mean, Iroh? Iro. Uh, like 85. Yeah, because um, I was only... I do remember you telling me, like... Because my final mission is like charge on Enbar in the palace, and you're telling me you had several missions after that. Uh, I had at least two, yes. Right. Yeah. I did forget to mention I did pair Felix and Sylvain in my uh, yeah in my room he, because he life, life because they, they fucking other. deserve each other. Yeah, uh, life partners in shittiness to each other. Yeah, and then uh, the 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 epilogue strip says they died on the same day because they couldn't wow. live without each other. That and, is some... and all of Fodlin rejoiced <laughs> on this great day. They made it a holiday afterwards. Yeah, uh, fucking that's that's some real fucking Thomas Jefferson John Adams shit right there. It's like, <laughs> like the only way it could be more better is if like they died on the day of like the 
Saints holiday or some shit. Right. You know? Yeah. All right. Uh, so yes, yeah, because yeah. so, my my playthrough, I I was about sixty five to seventy ish. But technically, I spent a lot of hours fishing. Technically, for a black long eagles time. will get you two roots, so I guess it would make sense they would be a little bit shorter. Yeah. But um, I also probably did because yours to not grind. Yeah, as much. yours has uh, the fewest chapters, right? Like, or I mean, maybe that just speaks to Edelgard's, you know, competence and efficiency as a it's leader. That pretty, she's just um, able to what happened? Clean up Fodlin a little bit faster than the rest yeah, of so us. Let's get into let's get into <laughs> yeah, the, so like. When we fucking do the one mission and Flame Emperor's mask falls off and it's Edelgard, like, that instantly brings up the question, what the fuck happens in Black Eagle's room? Yeah, I have some questions. Okay, so, um, well, hmm. All right, so, like I said, if you pick Black Eagles, you could actually choose two different routes. Uh, and it's all based on, this is the only route you get a couple of decisions that give you these massive, are you know, Warning, this decision is going to change the course of the game. Are you sure you want to do this? Pop up. Mm-hmm. Are you really sure you want to do this? Uh, questions. Um, the first one is pretty benign, but you have to pick yes for to get the second one. So the first one is at, okay. is at the beginning of the, the last month of school. Edelgard says, hey, I'm going back to the Empire and I want you to come with me. Will you Will you go with me? No other information. So you just have to say yes or no. And they give you the big warning. Sure, this sure. is going to change the course of the game. If you say no, you've already locked into the snow, Silver Snow route because you're not going to get the second choice. Okay. If you say yes, which I'm assuming most people will say yes, because I, I think talking to Chris, he will say I yes. Black Eagle yeah. to go to, and you don't, to, you, to okay, you don't have any other context or anything. So it's like, do you want... All right, yeah, sure, I'll go to the Empire. So... You go back to the the capital, and uh, Edelgard basically uses you to officiate her officially becoming the emperor. Because uh, they have right, to have a because you're basically like you're basically like a mini pope in terms yeah, of your authority. And, and let's state. just say she wasn't going to get Rhea to do it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so she has, she has you secretly go back with her to get sworn in as the new as the new emperor. Uh, and then she immediately dismisses the prime minister, who is uh, Ferdinand's father, who right, I, Geyer. who I guess I don't know how much you guys got, if any, of Edelgard's backstory, other than her uh, being exiled. Um, let me tell you about Edelgard's well, backstory. I know, you got the, how, I know you got the bit with her going back to the king, being exiled in the kingdom. Yeah, Edelgard. and like how her. Her wonderful year with Dimitri was a turning point in both of their lives and taught them their morals and allowed Dimitri to understand that borders are uh, are an affectation and that truly we all need to learn to get along. Um, I'm sure. Well, apparently Edelgard did not take any of those lessons to heart. I feel like this is one of those situations where like, she have, like this is one of those very real. Would she have been even worse like one of those, if that did not happen? Yes. <laughs> I know, honestly, this is one of those very real social situations where, like, maybe you have this friend or maybe you are that friend that, like, took something deeply impactful from something you said off the cuff, like, 10 years ago. And they're like, <laughs> hey, man, hey, you know, hey, it's been so long, but I just want to tell you, like, remember when you told me uh, that thing in high school? I just want to say, like, thank you so You're much, like, yeah, man. That, like, that thing really, like, that. I really got inspired. Like, I became a doctor. I became a lawyer because of you, because of what you said all those years ago. Like, wow, man, you really inspired me. And the other friend's are like, hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, like, I remember saying that. Oh yeah, you're the guy. You, you're the guy who had the funny hair in high school, right? Yeah. Hey, what's good, man? Oh, hey. Dear. Like, I feel like it's that situation with Edelgard and and Dimitri. Where, like, Dimitri has built his entire personality around his one year with Edelgard, and Edelgard doesn't even apparently give a fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's really sad to me. It's like really sad, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I don't know how much I want to dive into, because I feel like to fully explain Edelgard's backstory, I got to tell, like, the whole history of, of Fodlin and all that stuff. Which, I mean, I've no, no, I've you're, submitted you're to the fucking, You mean your fucking wrong version of the history. I mean, I've, of I've submitted to the court record in the past that Lysithia has two crests. Uh, yes. And, has uh, hair. Well, and, yeah, according to her support, she, the, like, once the, the, the horrible experiments on her succeeded, sure, her terror turned white. I would like to also submit the evidence that Edelgard's hair is white, 
and it is not white in the flashback with Dimitri. Yes. Hmm. And also when I fought her in the final boss room, she had two crests. Yes. Actually, if you check in Battle Grander 2.0, she also has two crests. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you, you, haven't seen, you haven't seen Final Boss at Elkar. <laughs> I have not. You keep describing this. This is something we did not mention, but when Iro completed the Blue Lines ref, he asked me, gee, which version did you fight? Of Edelgard did you which fight? version of Edelgard did you fight? And I should just post the screenshot in the Discord right now you and know, hear your live reaction. Actually, please do. Fuck it. I, I, I want to play I want to play the Blue Lines ref someday, but I we might as well just do this because this is good. Good to this is good radio, right? <laughs> huh. Uh, so, hmm. so as, uh, uh, what? what did she, did, <laughs> so, like, did she fucking like go full fucking Senator Armstrong here? I, think, just, yeah, like, I guess she's got a twenty-five range fireball that she just throws every, twice she, every turn. Did she rip off her shirt, reveal the nano machines, and plant it in her chest or something? Uh, I don't fucking know, man. It's this is like they, uh, they unleashed to the full power of her crests or something. Uh, yeah. So she, um, yeah. So suffice to say, uh, this is not this this version of Edelgard was not in my route. <laughs> no, not in mine either. Uh, but oh, really? Yes. No. None you of that. You get to play as this Edelgard in your route. Yet? I never. I never. Unfortunately, no. I did not get to ever use that version of Edelgard in my route. Um. But my version of Edelgard was strong enough anyway, because her she had uh, her her uh, her relic axe can keep attacking without on the same turn as many times as you want, um, which is as broken as it sounds. But uh, <laughs> but yes, with Edelgard's backstory, she did if, if you can piece together, then yes, she did go through a similar process to Lysithia and received the same crest of flames that Byleth has, uh-huh. the Flame Emperor. Uh, but as part of that process, they had to murder all of her siblings to basically steal their power or whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of that's a three plan. Uh, which uh, did not sit well with Edelgard, and that's, that was the point where she was swearing to destroy the system. Well, see, here's the problem. Here's the fucking problem I have, okay? <laughs> so we're just going to get into this conversation. So Edelgard has a, a holds resentment for the system that led to her being the result of these horrifying multiple crest implantation uh, experiments, correct? Because of this experiment, that drives her to destroy... Well, that's uh, that's like the, that the, 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 the match that sets off the, you know, whatever. Third. Well, let me tell you that, uh, at least in my route, she teams up with the people who did those experiments. Oh, no, yeah. So, well, here's yeah. the thing. She pointed her ire at the church, which had nothing to do with these experiments. Well, I, I, I don't want to talk about the church, but the... <laughs> the <laughs> So, so it's not that she teams up with them. She is born into that faction because um, the, the 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 dudes with the monsters and the plague masks and stuff. Those are all controlled by her uncle, and, is that Lord Arundel or yes, whatever. Lord Arundel, and so she's like born into that faction. And as part of their, you know, shady behind the scenes deal, that's that's how they that's what they do to Edelgard to make her like the puppet emperor, so that they can secretly control. Uh, Oh, good. She's an internal reformer. Those always work well, out. She, well, she... I Yes, I agree. Just, she kind of doesn't... At least early on, she doesn't have a choice, because that's all she has to work with at the time. But I definitely would... I definitely question her continuing to work with them later, even though she's like, oh, well, once once we've accomplished our goal, then we'll take care of them or whatever, which I'm like, eh, I promise. Yeah, yeah. Yes, don't worry. Don't worry. Once, once the... Once we have won the Civil War and uh, the Galactic Empire has been united, don't worry. We'll finally get rid of those shady yeah, elements so, like like Oberstein. Yeah, and of course, Hubert is like best friends with them, right? But uh, the yes. but Edelgard, Edelgard <laughs> does not like them and in, supposedly in intends on destroying them, which you do finally have in my route. Because uh, when you kill, because Cornelia is ultimately loyal to them as well. And so, yeah, sure. I didn't even so get when you, my route. When you, yeah, the Empire, when you yeah. kill Cornelia, that pisses them off, and then you're officially at odds with each other and no longer like working together. Um, so that does kind of happen in my route. But she does spend a fair amount of the... What, what I find interesting is in my route, because you guys, when you fight the Empire, they all have like monsters and stuff, right? 
I yeah, do not dog. Get... There's a monster. In yeah, her and There's like a robot monster in her fucking. I do not get. Uh, got mechs and laser I do turrets. not get to use any of that stuff ever in my route. Yeah. No, you didn't get to launch an orbital fucking. Oh, I get laser. the orbital laser launched on me. Actually, I that's didn't... how they. I didn't see that's that. How they, that's how they retaliate. Oh That's how they there's, retaliate there's from uh, killing Cornelia. They launched an orbital laser on the city we took. So I actually got it launched uh, on me. But um, okay, okay, yeah, that tracks. So I, yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm not trying to justify Edelgard working with them. I'm just saying that's that was the the path they were going with on that. Yes, I mean, okay. So here's the thing: if I'm actually being charitable, as much as I don't think Edelgard deserves charity, if I'm being charitable. I guess you could make the argument that, like, the Edelgard that we fight in, like, Eero and my route is the Edelgard that does not have a Byleth and does not, and as a, as a result is probably forced to keep teaming up with the right. real baddies. That's probably. Mm-hmm. Of, like, I mean, there, there's have. a pretty good conversation, like, pr- immediately prior to the final mission in Blue Lions. Yeah. Where uh, Dimitri calls her to parlay and they kind of talk talk through it a bit. <laughs> Although she comes to the conclusion that like their ideals are unable to be reconciled, and we must fight. But, I mean, uh, so I, I guess my argument is like in the same way that like Dimitri and my route without the protagonist's moderating influence goes full fucking rabid animal. Like I could point and... to the exact moment in my route where he's about to sneak off on his own to just run an end bar by himself, and Byla stops him. Right, which is basically what happens in my life. And that's what, like gets Dimitri dies for it, basically. Uh, and like in and again, like so, so I think even with Edelgard, you could make the argument that like even in Edelgard's route, despite how like above it all she makes she 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 gives off that aura, like actually without the protagonist's moderating influence, there she also goes full in on like yeah, you know, summoning. I think I think it's part of that. And and you do see obviously it, when you're supporting directly with her, you see more of her you know human side and all that, which helps a little bit. But the the, uh, the there's the moderating elements of having Byleth, and also you're so successful that the circumstances never they never get, get to that the point desperate. where she's desperate enough to have to tap into that stuff, and she can maintain her at right. least idea of some kind of high ground, right? So uh, sure. th- that's an interesting – that would be an interesting thing to analyze a bit more, I think. I would also be interested in looking at – because I, I think I understand – because I went and read the wikis and everything I've done because I don't plan on playing more. I think <laughs> I understand the both sides of the church and humanity and the conflict, and that's another interesting discussion because I'm curious – Look, as far as I know, you know, as far as I know, as far as what I, what has, as far as the information that has been presented to me, I'll say uh, Rhea did nothing wrong. I think she was entirely justified in all of her actions, and that uh, okay, <laughs> that uh, she. That so I will uh, say, everything she's done I, don't, I don't even know what these the, actions are. So. Everything, she, everything she's done in the name of the church. I would say, is, uh, I would say that. <laughs> from so from Edelgard's perspective, that she says directly in the root, and this is not the wiki talking. Uh, she she also holds the, the reason why she holds the church ultimately responsible is because she's the one she's saying it's because of the church that the crests and nobility exist and why we have the, the why we have the class system, system yes. that we have and she wants to create a a you know a you know merit based system where people can be successful on their own you know oh you mean like how she tells Dimitri that only the strong deserve to live after she tears down the establishment she never says that no but you know the, the, Look, the, 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 I'm just saying I, I'm just saying I think I think it'll, I think that's the strong will no longer the strong will no longer trample the weak because only the strong will exist that's Look, what I, wow okay that's a that's yeah, we a, never that's go a flex, that far I guess on my, on my uh, route. Uh, the thing I was going to say is I feel like even if Edelgard has her heart in the right place, I still say she directed all of her energy at the wrong target for the majority of that right, war. We'll, uh, so. we'll, we'll, we'll uh, reconvene on that conversation after we're, we've got the full spoiler uh, ban lifted. But um, so All right, then, then one last thing I'll say for this conversation is uh, you know who doesn't need a moderating uh, influence? You know who's a cool guy across all three routes, regardless of uh, whether the protagonist is there or not? 
His name's Claude Regan. Yeah, I mean, uh, he uh, teamed up with us and, uh, like, gave me his relic bow and everything. And, like, <laughs> said, it's, it's your problem now, idiot. And you know, just fuck you, know off. The, you know the one of the three lords who doesn't need you there to stop him from turning <laughs> into a violent psychopath? <laughs> yeah. Claude. So, um, All right. Anyway, back to the back to the crimson flower route. Just uh, the so yeah, we, that we had the two decisions. One, you make Edelgard emperor, and then if you've made that decision, uh, we you go to the 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 monastery battle, which I think we all had, where the empire attacks the monastery. And mm-hmm. so, in your route, in in the Black Eagles route, you actually fight Edelgard. She attacks with. Uh, you know the the monsters and stuff like that. And in my route, she she doesn't. Need, I don't even know if she shows up as the Flame Emperor. She's just like, yeah, I'm the Flame Emperor. Let's fight. And uh, I don't think she had. I don't even remember her having the mask at any point. Because you still get like the cutscene with the, the Drea turning yes, into a that dragon the end, and all but, that. Um, the but yeah, so like we we actually fight her with the Black Eagle students and everything. And at the very end, you you get your one more giant big choice. Which uh, is uh, do you kill it? Do you kill Edelgard or not? Um, and you can't actually kill her here, but based on your decision, if you choose yes, which is what Chris did, she pieces out, and then uh, you you go on the the what is basically the church route, and you know your group becomes the church, uh, and you fight against Edelgard, or if you choose to spare her, as I did, uh, you go on the the Crimson Flower route, which is the full on Edelgard Empire route. And, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it was a very interesting experience. I did some things that I'm probably not proud of. Um, I'm going to go to hell, especially because I killed Mercedes. Um, I <laughs> killed Mercedes. Uh, going? And it's, it's, it's a pretty strange, because like I said, you basically go on a forward march and don't stop and just steamroll everything to the capital. Um, the you, you you fight the alliance first, and it's only like two battles basically that you get to Claude, and Claude's like, "Yeah, I can't beat you. I'm out." And uh, so he he just pieces out. You let him go. Uh, yeah, he's like, "I got." I mean, he's like, "I got nothing." You guys, like, it's not gonna be fighting you is not gonna accomplish anything. So he just pieces out. Look, Claude's a master tactician, but without a uh, without a maneuver specialist <laughs> on his team to help direct his armies, you yeah. know, just. Uh, it just so, come so it, and I never see him again after that. And then um, we march through the kingdom for the rest of the game, basically, until we get to. Uh... So in my, in my so in my version of the game, yeah. I guess Dimitri never loses it, and he he doesn't have the eye patch. He seems pretty chill for the couple times I see him, and but he spends the entire route protecting the church. He basically the when you when the empire attacks the monastery, it's so like we never kidnap Rhea or anything. Like she just she flees to the, to the kingdom and stays at the capital for the whole game. Um, and then you basically march to the the capital to get to Rhea, and that's kind of like where the game ends. But um, it was interesting because I like I said like they try to. I think the game wants you to justify Edelgard's actions. I don't personally buy into it all the way, but I can kind of um, like, I can kind of understand the direction they were trying to go. And some of it was just like, yeah, I don't know about that, but um, it was interesting, at least plot wise to kind of play along with it, I guess. And it, in the end, I, when it, when it came down to like, who am I going to pair up with? I didn't feel like I deserved or really any of the guys in black Eagles deserve the girls in black Eagles. Cause the girls have, black Eagle, like we said last time, <laughs> black Eagles has like the worst guys and like the best girls. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I just, I just stayed with Edelgard so we can go straight to hell together. And, uh, you know, I ended up, uh-huh. with a, I really didn't end up with that many supports, uh, with, with people hooking up anyway. Like, um, I did get the Bernie Casper and I did get, uh, I got Linhart Marianne, which turned out to be pretty good. Okay. I could see that working out. I, I mean, hooked up Linhart with Lysithia. So she yeah, I, I didn't recruit Lysithia, uh, yeah. so I didn't have her, I, but, um, I am happy to report that Lysithia and Hanneman got well. They a supported together in in my route, and that remains a purely uh, teacher student yes. relationship. Um, so. Yeah, no, Linhart and Marianne actually turned out to be pretty good because, like, I was surprised how like good their conversations were because most of Linhart's conversations are kind of awful. Um, but 
But he's like, I mean, it makes <laughs> sense. Like Marianne's whole deal is her crest, and Lindhart. But he was like, like surprisingly like, like over, supportive right? of her, which is weird. But uh, they, they, it worked out pretty good for okay. them. They ended up like some, doing some like crest research academy thing or something with her father or something like that, and then. Uh, and then the bet in the in the best twist where I didn't want to hook up uh, Dorothy or Petra with anybody, they just hooked up with each other. Uh, <laughs> Dorothea, right. Dorothea yes, goes back home cool. with Petra, and uh, you know they become the uh, lesbian queens of uh, Bridget for. <laughs> the, I mean, it, it is very much the Fire Emblem classic of the uh, the life partners in statehood uh, in stateship yeah. uh, ending epilogue. You've a lot in Fire Emblem games where they can't, they, you know, they can't be explicit about it. So whenever they have like two same sex supports, it's just like, and they remain close to each other for the rest of their days. Says, they work uh, to, you know, it says at the, the end. Uh, it is said that uh, you know Dorothea was the person that Petra loved the most, or something like that, and that's as far as they were. Yes, I mean my my understanding is that the Annette and Mercedes support. <laughs> and, uh, they basically move in together. <laughs> sure, why not? That tracks. They're best friends already at the start yeah, of the game. So, <laughs> I my ending with Annette was like because you only get Gilbert and Blue Lion through, and so I had okay, them yeah. I had them reconcile. That's uh, nice. I uh, I feel bad. Annette ended up alone in my game because I just didn't yeah. use her that oh, much. Yeah, I think she like started up like her own sorcery school or some shit. I ended up having to. Sure, sure. I didn't know how to kill Gilbert. Um, yeah, you killed Gilbert in front yeah, of her. And, Annette. In it was, front of, I think Annette it was basically. the. It was either the last map or the second to last map. I had to kill Gilbert, and Annette was not on the map, but she appears after you kill him, and she's like, you know, don't worry, Father, I'll handle it. Unfortunately, I didn't have to fight her, but. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Um, and like I said, I had to kill Mercedes too. I was in a. I was in, I, 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 was, in a, I was in a. Uh, I was in a kill all the commanders battle, and she was one of the commanders. I had no choice. It was her and Sylvain, which you know. Just well, kill Sylvain, like no, no just kill Sylvain <laughs> twice. That's yeah, how exactly. Right? I, mean, uh, I will say that like Sylvain got what was coming to him in the Battle of Grotter two point where uh, in that version of the battle in the Golden Deer route, uh, Sylvain leads a contingent that basically appears behind your formation. Oh, that was him and that you're, okay. Yes, and so Sylvain's like, basically, we'll pierce through the, you know, we'll get him in the rear and like take him out. And like, that's where like Flay Lysithia was. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I don't want to kill my fellow students, but like, if you raise your sword against like Flay and Lysithia, like I will fucking burn <laughs> you to the ground. And that's exactly I, uh, what I did. I had to fight Flayne twice. Uh, you, you do not kill her. She gets away. Um, and the first time she kicked my ass, I think I talked about that on the last pod, on the last episode. The second one, not so much, but. Um, I'm glad I didn't have to actually kill her, but fighting her was not fun. Um, but yeah, so I, like I said, I think it was interesting. Uh, it was an interesting experience to like see the game try to spin and justify what would have easily just been a black and white, like these are the bad guys situation. And while I don't think they were a hundred percent successful, I think it was an interesting attempt to uh, to kind of handle that, and I'm kind of glad that's I've like even though I'm like morally that might have been not been the route I would have gone like like personally like I feel like I was I feel like I'm glad I went that route because it seemed like very interesting to me like to see how they would handle it. So uh, for sure, I mean, I definitely agree. I think it is a, a really. I believe me, if I had the time, I would love yeah. to play all four routes of this game. And I, I think that, like, yeah. there is something really interesting about the way this game has, like, weaved its story. And, and honestly, I'll be a little sad if it, like... Because I think they said that they're, the last piece of DLC that they're going to release in 2020 is yeah. story DLC. Yes. And, like, they're claiming, claiming, they're claiming new characters and new maps. Yeah, I will be a little bit sad if they reveal that to just be the golden, like, everybody is happy route, because, like... That defeats the purpose of what this game is, right? Because like I think I think a big like theme of this game is like, you know, you cannot save everybody, and like people are not always going to be friends. You know, like you can't just like gin up an, an evil wizard to like 
come out of the ground and like pe- yeah, expect people yeah. to put aside their differences. You know? you talk about. I mean, hell, some people might even some people might even side with that evil wizard, stating entirely valid right. reasons for That's it. Kind of and, game this is right. Um, yeah, I will say I'm glad I did not take the Silver Snow route because I don't know if I could side with the church, but. Uh... Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I'm so curious I about. Like, I kind of like, want to know. Because, like, I definitely don't – would not say Rhea did nothing wrong. I don't think what she did maybe merited burning the entire country down. But um, – Why did she do that? No, I'm, 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 saying, I'm saying Edelgard <laughs> burned the country down for the sake of oh, killing oh, Rhea, sure. which I don't know if that was necessary. But I don't think Rhea is totally blameless for everything she's done either. But – um. Rhea had her reasons. I, yeah, that, again, that's an interesting... I would love to discover yes. these. Maybe if you... Look, look, I'm just saying, Jell, if you know what had been done to Rhea in the past, that uh, maybe you'd understand where a lot of her uh, her rather myopic views of humanity come from. No, I know what happened. I'm talking about, but like... Do you? Yeah. I, no, I, guess no, you I know. I, I'm pretty sure I I'm pretty sure I know everything at this point as far as like right. the history part of it. I was uh, saying, are you thinking the injustice carried out against her somehow? Uh... No, no, I don't think... Any, I, well, I, what I'm saying is I don't think either side is justified, but... Sure. It's, it's what I'm ultimately... I'm, I'm, again, I'm mostly joking when I say Rhea did nothing wrong. I yes. Know. I know right. realistically Rhea does well, a it lot is the, of- It is a funny <laughs> counterpoint to Edelgard did nothing wrong, when in fact both of them did things wrong, I think. But uh, yes. yeah, so yeah, I think my, my point was not that one side is right and one side's wrong. I think both sides were right and wrong, <laughs> which is the interesting... Yeah, I think that is always the more interesting story. Right. Like these sides that are diametrically opposed to each other arriving at the conclusions there, they did. There was some and back and forth uh, and whatnot, but um, yeah. Anyways, so um, yeah, I can't can't say much more about Silver Snow since none of us played it, and unfortunately, Chris couldn't make it on today. But I I know I know I do know that it goes in a similar direction to your route G as to how it ends. Let's put it that way. As to I have heard that. I'm curious off. because well, my understanding is that the Golden Deer route has an exclusive final boss, so that makes me curious what happens in the okay. Church route. Maybe, maybe I don't. Because, it's a similar path, but perhaps it arrives at a different conclusion. Maybe, maybe it doesn't. I'm, I'm maybe it doesn't quite end in the same spot. But I feel like it was. I think it was moving in that direction of the right, who your right. enemy was. But um, so yeah. Okay. Fire them three houses. There you go, boy. Uh, an hour, an hour and fifteen into this podcast, we can finally start talking about <laughs> anime. Yeah. So what's going on in anime? Well, given the amount of time we have left, I don't know how much anime we're going to actually talk about. So I think maybe what we have to talk about anime. I'm sorry, we have to. No, we're, we're going. I, we're going to talk about anime. I just don't know if we're going to hit everything on this list we have here. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I think maybe what we'll do if we. I I did want to talk about Given, and I did want you guys to talk about Grand Belm. So maybe that'll round out our time here. All right. Um, All right. What's going on in Given? So I just. How I, was the other band show this season going? The other what is the other band show? Carol and Tuesday. Oh, that still exists, right? That still exists. Ah, ah, there we yeah. go. There we go. And <sighs> that's all we have to say about Carol and Tuesday. I really forgot that show exists. Well, okay. I will once again point out the most recent episode was written by the good writer. <laughs> right. On shout out to Kimi, shout out to Kimiko Ueno, who did a lot of the best episodes of Space Dandy and all of the best episodes <laughs> of Carol Tuesday. Even is an actual Episodes of Carol and Tuesday. Given is an actual band show about being in an actual band, uh, and uh, features Has the guy f- discovered what bands are yet. Yes, and I... does he know how to restring his guitar? I don't know actually if he figured that part out <laughs> yet. But um, I, I think I, I wanted to mention because I think I think they've finally hooked me. I think I've, I think I've come around. I can. Oh, all right. The the. I, like it's funny because based on the first like episode or two, I did not think that the writing had the chops to handle the directions they were going with like the some of the dramatic backstories and stuff. And now that I've actually gotten into it, they're doing a pretty good job of it because there's some like really dramatic bombs they've been dropping the past couple episodes. Like, uh, so like they have the 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 older senpai dudes in the band. One of them has secretly in love with the other one. And they, he, they 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 go like a, through a whole flashback of like 
when they first met and everything and why he likes him so much. And then they drop the bomb at the end that the other dude is shacked up with some other guy and they'll never be together or whatever. And no. like they, and then uh, they get a little bit into the, um, the, the airhead guys tragic backstory. Like I mentioned, they were teasing while they dove right into it this time. And apparently he was dating this boy and the, the guy ended up killing himself. And the, the it's, huh, it's, okay. it's, it's his guitar that he's been carrying around because uh, his mother wanted him to have it. And now this has turned into like a, you know, him trying to move past that. And it's interesting. I just find it interesting that these are like very like uh, these could be like very melodramatic type of like intense moments. And they're, they're handling them pretty well, like, like uh, in a reasonable calm manner i guess as opposed to like making it you know these big you know tearful melodramatic moments or whatever um sure sure it has it has a little bit of nuance to it that i was not expecting from based on the initial episodes and um i feel pretty invested in it and then you've got the and then you've got the the band stuff that i you know i just personally like that they've been kind of layering on it like they're gearing up for like their first actual live performance and like the anxiety of that um and yeah, I just I, I think I've I think I've come around on it. I, I maybe I'm just going to officially recommend it now. For if that sounds <laughs> interesting to you, you want some uh, you know fun band stuff mixed in with some uh, you know relationship drama and whatnot. It's it's been pretty good. So you know, well, glad to hear it eventually makes it work. You know, I remember yeah. your initial impressions were a little like yeah, you know, uh, it's extremely it's it's pretty rare that a show pulls itself together like that. So like, I'm just glad that yeah. it, I was not expecting, I, I, you know, I was still watching cause I was enjoying it to a certain degree, like the band stuff and whatnot, but the fact that they're pulling nice the, to right. the show together, even though it took, yeah, them I feel like, is, is, yeah, I feel like usually with anime, like the just usual story further. And so right, right, I feel like the usual story, something starts off really strong and then eventually falls apart. Right. But it's, it's neat to hear that the show managed to pull it together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause it was, it was mostly like, I felt like they were writing checks they were not going to be able to cash, and so far they're cashing them. So that's uh, cool. It's pretty okay. good. So shout out to Given. Um, and then I do want to talk about all the other shows we have on here, but I guess we'll, we'll save that for next time. And maybe we should just. I don't know. Do you have like a two sentence blurb you can give about uh, t- Do You Love Your Mom or, <laughs> or The One Within or whatever? Yeah, you know, so that, a, that a, a show. A brief check in. It is basically turned into each arc is battling an evil mom, and uh, you know what? That <laughs> do you but do you love your mom and her two multi-target attacks? So this this mom, Let's... do you love your do you love your mom Pope and her ability to teach you brawling and sword? <laughs> <laughs> Keep the fire on old jokes running. Um, yeah, th- this mom they, they meet a uh, they go to like this academy and meet a uh, meet a like horribly aggressive helicopter mom. Uh, oh no. And, uh, so that, that's we're still in the middle of that arc, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, they've mostly kept it pretty tame, although the last episode had a tentacle scene, very brief tentacle scene, mm. which was not as bad as the slime scene before, but still, it was there. Um, but other than that, it's stupid and okay. mildly fun, I guess. Um, that's all I wanted to know. Yeah. Just checking in still on how the moms are doing. Still plugging along. Uh-huh. Uh, so how's the mom doing in Grand Belm, G? Um, oh, we're just jumping right into it, huh? <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, the moms Grand are is fucking wild. Grand Belm, my guys, yeah, y'all. I wanted to hear y'all me. This, yes. Y'all heard me last podcast. You know, yeah, like, yeah, right. I say, y'all, please, people, you gotta watch Grand Belm. Like, really I didn't, do. I didn't know if you were gonna be as hot on it. Uh, this like this block of episodes after Ji Guan Long transformed into battle mode and all that, but uh. Getting also, so also want to want to point out want to point out apparently um so apparently a lot of the staff have kind of gone onto like Twitter or like the equivalent of like Japanese Twit longer or whatever or Tumblr okay. and have been like answering questions about the world building oh really and right. they specifically stated that uh, uh Ji Guan Long's uh, new form is called uh, Shin Guan Long uh, Awakened Ji Guan Long and so uh, Ji Guan Long Awakened. Oh <laughs> uh, damn it! All right, uh, so. The, these episodes kind of get more into Anna Fugo, the yes. Uh, yes. psycho, That's crazy, crazy murderer girl. <laughs> um, so like, 
they get into the backstory of like why she hates uh, Shingetsu so yes. much, or and as like, she calls her Ernesta. Right. Uh, I forget her actual name besides uh, Ernesta and Shingetsu. But uh, yeah, so, so the later, yeah, so the prior two episodes were about Nene and Jiguan Long. These two were about Anna Fugo, and her, the the nature of her family and her rivalry with Shingetsu, and. Uh, it's like, wow! <laughs> right, it's like her family adopted Shingetsu to be like their major representative yes. and all that. And uh, but apparently, because Anafugo actually is a real shitty mage, but they kept up a charade her entire life that she was actually a good mage by having Shingetsu like. I- Fake magic, fake magic for her this whole time. They literally, it's it's really fucked up. Like Anna's mom, Anna's mom might actually be like if it were not for um, if it were not for Carol and Tuesday, uh, uh, I think that Anna's mom might actually be in the running for like the worst mom of 2019, like the mm-hmm. the most well intentioned but worst mom of 2019. Like in turn, like like she might be like a fucking textbook case of how to not raise your children, like no matter of, how of good like, your intentions are, of like fooling them into thinking they're great uh, when like, they're demonstrably not, and or, just or, like it's not even that, but it almost gets into some into some fucking like, like literal, gaslighting, n- not even gaslighting or yeah, kind of gaslighting. It almost gets into some fucking like fucking like we trained her wrong as mm. a joke territory like <laughs> it's so like fucking like not mean spirited but like ill considered so, so let's just get into it so uh episode the, the first of the two episodes yes it kind of gets into anna's like resentment of shingetsu and the reason the we find out that so uh, apparently something tragic happens to shingetsu's family she is orphaned and adopted by the fugo family you know, we kind of see that initially Anna and Shigetsu are very close to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see Anna is a very, like, kind and friendly young girl who has, like, these very, like, wide-eyed dreams about one day becoming the Fugo family mage. Yep. And the tragedy of the situation is we find out that uh, apparently uh, Anna's mom has such a dim view of Anna's capability as a mage. Her magical crystal is too small. Uh, she is too weak as a mage that right. uh, she could never be the Fugo family's representative. Right. She refuses to hand over the like big ass Fugo family crystal because yes. if you're like, as was demonstrated when Mangetsu went crazy against Jigon Long, uh, if you try to use too much magic power uh, when you're not able to control it, it's a dangerous to yourself and others. Yes, you lose yourself to the power, and, and so, so like, yeah. So the explanation eventually, like, so, you know, Anna shuts herself in her, like, in her basement or whatever, like, fucking right, trying to figure out some... Magic atelier. Yeah, to, like, you know, hit the books. Like, the idea is that we get is that Anna has trained her entire life to become the Fugo family's Grand Bell uh, representative. And she operates under the assumption that she truly has inherited the full power of the Fugo family magic. And, like... That like, and she has worked her entire life to surpass Shingetsu, who has effortlessly like beaten her at every turn, and right, and repeatedly says, "You can never defeat me, Anna." Right, and, and Shingetsu like maybe the winner of like worst uh, worst conversationalist of 2019, like repeatedly like like she claims, "Oh, I'm telling Anna that because I don't I don't want to hurt her. I just want her to it's give up on her works. life and, life and dreams." And because that is because, because she's, she's doomed to never achieve them, so she should just give up. Right. She literally takes this philosophy that because Anna will never succeed, the sooner she just gives up on her dreams, the be- like the sooner she can move on with the rest of her life. So she gets to decides that the best way to communicate this to her adopted sister and closest friend is to constantly tell Anna, "You will never be good enough. You will never beat me. No matter how hard you work, you can. You will never like." You will never like be an equal match for me, and like this drives Anna's like burning resentment and inferiority <laughs> complex all her life, eventually leading to uh, um, Anna's right, mom and finding like... Shingetsu and begging Shingetsu to come to the Fugo household so that she and uh, so An- so Anna's mom and Shingetsu can finally like just come clean. Right. Of course, about like the truth. also right before this, like Anna's like apprentice mage just like walks off. Right, Sweet Show right. just failed. Right. Sweet Sh- right, so Sweet Show has kind of been in the background. She's like the, the caster well, specialist she's of like, the robots. She's like, like goofy anime Yeah, girl. she's uh, like, voiced, says, by, says, uh, yeah, voiced by Aoi Yuki. Voiced by Aoi Yuki. Except uh, it's very like, good. Nya, nya, nya. 
Of course, she goes, yeah, 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 and then she goes, yeah, that's right, I fucking killed your sister, so what? And it's very good how quickly she flip-flops between those two voices. <laughs> but, uh... Right, she ditches Anna, straight up straight up says to her to Anna's face, like, I have nothing, like, I have nothing to gain, because you're too weak. Yes, you're and then ju- weak. Judo throws her and walks off. Yes. So, uh, eventually Shingetsu comes to the, uh, the Fugo household... <laughs> And um, as they're, like, talking about how they're going to have this conversation, uh, we find out... So here's the... I noticed. I thought that Anna locked herself in the basement. There's a lock on the outside of the basement door, implying that the Fugo family locked Anna in the basement. Oh, boy. I didn't notice that. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter she because... She uh, the fucking axe! Anna takes an axe from the basement and fucking... fucking Jack Nicholas is her way out of it and fucking like goes on a crazy axe rampage attempting to murder Shingetsu right there on the spot. Uh, so continuing the axe her. murder themes from a uh, last podcast. What? Yeah. Always comes back. Finally, she relents and Anna's mother and Shingetsu like have this tearful, like, please <laughs> we fucked up. You're shit. You ain't shit, Anna. You've never been hot shit. You've always sucked your entire life. Please give up on your dreams. And, like, they're trying to frame this, like, th- we're telling you this because we love you. Like, we love you so much. Like, because the problem is that Shingetsu, like, Shingetsu is just not a very, like, sympathetic character. Like, she's not arrogant, but she's, like, very, like, con- conceited in the way that, like, and I don't mean to use this term flippantly, but she's very conceited in a very, like, Mary Sue-ish sort of way. Where, she's not, like, like because, intentionally because, being, con- like, but but she's, like, so, like, emotionless and pragmatic that it's just logical that I'm better. Right. Kind of like, it's not even that, but it's, like, so the thing is, that, like, to Anna, her entire life has been about the Grand Bell. She has devoted her entire life to this. Or Shingetsu takes the opinion. Like, oh, like, I, will, I didn't ask. For, I didn't ask to be the strongest mage. Right. I like just, Shingetsu, like, I just have. I'm just better than all of you. I never asked right. for this. Like Shingetsu, How can I constantly... feel the burden of being better than Anafugo at everything. Right. Shingetsu constantly limits. Oh, it's my curse that I'm so overwhelmingly powerful. <laughs> like I'm so much better than everybody else. I never asked to be better and stronger and cooler than everybody else. This is my curse. The Grand Bell. I never wanted to fight in the Grand Bell. And so, like to her, she has this very this idea like, oh, the Grand Bell is a curse. Who could possibly want to fight in this thing? But like. Because of that, every statement she lays out, like, like she's like constantly telling like Twist Anna, the knife more. <laughs> right? It just pisses off Anna even more because of the way Anna's personality is, because of this inferiority complex she has, like it just comes off as patronizing and condescending. And so, like, eventually, like the conversation ends, Anna just kind of slumps over, like life. We lost get the in her eyes. yeah, but we get the, you know. the gift. We finally get the like soft focus. She smiles, a tr- like tearful smile at. She gets to and is like, "Yeah, I trust yeah. my dream to you to win the Grand Belm." Yes, she she smiles with tears in her eyes, like very well. I guess Final, you're right. finally had the uh, reconciliation that we all hoped for, <laughs> and then the credits start. Right, it starts and, playing the ending, and, <laughs> and then the credits like, stop, and it cuts to black. Fucking like mid lyric, like second, like fucking mid lyric. It's been a minute into the end sequence. Mid mid song how, lyric. What what time? The show just cut. What time in the episode is this happening? Like how much time? This is the, the end. very end. This is the credit. This is the ED. Yeah, uh, this is the ending during credit. the ED. But I mean, is there time left on the like overall time of the episode still? Like there was enough to convince us that whatever was left was just going to be the next episode okay, preview. Okay. We had zero indication that this could, there could possibly be a stinger at the end of this episode. Right. Me and Eero start going, like, huh, that's not really how I wanted Anna's character to go. Kind right, of like I, I had, then... like, tabbed to a different window until the audio cut, and yes. I, was like, went, I was like, wait, so what happened? Let me cut back, what happened to my right. video? Right, you think the oh, video wait. corrupted. Oh, and wait, cuts... Anna fucking assaulted her mother in her sleep. To steal the key to the Fuko family yes. magic crystal. Anna's mother <laughs> is seen in the is seen in the in her bed, blood dripping from her wrist. We don't even know if she's alive. The implications are that Anna may have just murdered her mother, and uh, she opens up like the fucking lock that I guess she needed her mother's blood for to steal the Fugo family crystal. And 
she just has the most fucking evil psychotic grin on her face. It's so good. It is like there's no fighting this episode. We were originally we were originally like, ah, oh, that was an okay episode, I guess. And then all of a sudden, no. Grand Bell Anime of the Year 2019 cut in the middle of the credits like it's that. It's so uh, good. It's it's so unbelievable. So you guys, you like, guys don't know what happens yet. Next. No, no. Not, not at that not point. Oh, there's another next. episode. Okay. So that oh. was last week's episode. <laughs> the reason why Grand Bell is quickly rising in the ranks oh of 2019 God. is now this week we get the fight. We get the square <laughs> off between Anafugo and, and Shingetsu now that Anafugo has been powered up by A, the Fugo family crystal. And be her overwhelming murderous intent, right? Or like we get a scene before the the fight starts, where she's where like her little sister is like, "Can't you make up with? Can't you make up with Ernesta Shingetsu? Like, can and like can we all be friends?" And Anna Fugo like gingerly pets her little sister and says, "I don't care about the Granville money more. All I care yes. about is watching Ernesta suffer." Yes, with the most serene smile really? on her face. Like, as though she has achieved yeah. zen. The only thing and she... to me now is watching her face under my boot. Yes. And then she, the last thing she says to her sister before the fight begins is, Oh, dear sister, my spirit died long ago. <laughs> this and fucking then, show so much. This show! And then the fight kicks off. And, oh my god, this fight is so fucking good. Like I, I, I hate that we were already an hour thirty into this because I want to just go, I want to go blow by blow, but we got to kind of speed this up. So Anna has is is Power there with, with Aconite Grease and uh, the upgraded the fire, gemstone. Her fire powers were actually just an application of the Fugo family's true ability. Right, because it turns out that the Fugo family's control. Yes, the Fugo family's true power is temperature control. And, like, so initially she's, like, beating the shit ass she gets to. She pulls the, like, Nappa upward finger flick to, like, trigger a, a magical explosion. Nice. It's very good. Um, uh, uh, um, fucking she gets to still overpowers Anna. Like, fucking cuts off all of Akadai Grease's limbs. And right, then... Just uh, stabs her in the leg with her shotgun bayonets. Just starts punching her in the face. Yes, it's very good. Great choreography. Once again, it's like, blah, blah, blah. Anna, you can never beat me. Uh, she about to walk away after she is fucking uh, fucked up Anna. Fuck and then me. Anna absorbs the family magical crystal, crystal into herself. And Aconite Grease is reborn as Aconite Regatta, <laughs> which is Aconite Reborn. Um, well, super powered up, it grows a mouth and horns and a flaming mane of white fire. The mech names, uh, the mech names are very good in this show. The, the mech names are very good in this show. We are ta- I assure you, Euro and I are taking notes. Um, um, we got we got to call something regatta. We got to we got to. Uh, super powered up. Yep. Fucking, fucking attacking Shigetsu. Here's the greatest. So we we said how the Fugo family. Army. Yes. Um, the thing I want to say though, so 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 Joe, you haven't watched this episode. I can only describe this verbally. Okay. So we said how the Fugo family magic like specialty was not actually flames, but temperature control. So she's like launching these like flaming hyper beams at Shingetsu, and then transforming them into ice mid air and shattering them into like a like an explosion of like metal sh- like um, ice shards. Right. To like it's 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 a really cool image. It's a really cool image. Um. Like, she fucking launches a flaming spirit bomb that turns into ice and then, like, explodes into, like, a fucking ice claymore. She's swinging, swinging around like halberds made of fire and ice and yes, stuff. Yes, dual-wielding halberds of flame and ice. It's very good. Uh, you know, the, yes, Anna summons a bunch of, like, fucking magical mooks to fight Shingetsu. Eventually, Shingetsu summons her own giant mook. Like, just one big mook that's, like, 20 times bigger than her. And Anna responds by summoning her own giant mooks right, so to fight the so big... Their, their mechs are fighting while in the background the big mechs are fighting each other. It's very good. It's very good. Anna, like, jumps into the hand of the big mook. I mean, not Anna. Shingetsu jumps in the hand of her big mook to amplify a beam attack from its hand. And Anna responds by just fucking self-destructing her mook and taking them out together. It's <laughs> It's really good. Eventually, fucking. Uh, have I mentioned that at this point, Anna has started to cry blood out of one of her eyes? Um, oh, I'm assuming there was um, going to be repercussions for absorbing a giant magic crystal. She fucking blood summons, pouring out of her orifices. Fucking, fucking summons two big axes of fire and ice again, and they're like 
spins them together into a giant fire and ice tornado. Uh, sh- I should mention that at this point, she's starting to cry blood out of both her oh, eyes now. Oh, boy. Um, this fucking, fucking show. Long story short, though, she gets to manages to get the upper hand. She like pulls off like a, a double cross illusion that distracts Anna. Cuts off all the limbs, disabled. Uh, uh, cuts bisects and a uh, uh, aconite regatta, and like Shingetsu's once again starting to talk shit. Like, did see? Didn't I tell you you could never beat me? Like, blah blah blah. Constantly telling Anna that she was never going to be good enough. But I love you or something. I don't know. It's <laughs> Shingetsu sucks. I don't like her. Um, uh, Anna. Like, oh, yes, here's the line. Anna, you don't belong here. You never have and you never will. Uh, Anna, again, looks like she's accepted her fate. Her eyes are sunken in. Like, she's, she's like... fully covered in blood. <laughs> yes. And, 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 oh, my God, the show is so good. She goes in to shake Shingetsu's hand. And Shingetsu is, like, so happy. Oh, I'm so glad we finally reconciled. It's, a motherfuck- it's another motherfucking double cross, baby. <laughs> Just, like, Anna- yank her in. Summons new and, limbs for her mech made out of ice and just starts choking the yes, life out. Anna, but but the, 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 it visually, Anna turns into a fucking spirit of flame and hatred that somehow manages to like infiltrate Anna's. I mean, uh, uh, she gets his cockpit and, and, and starts strangling her. And, and the yes, the mech outside is also strangling the shit out of uh, she gets his mech, uh, Viola Katz. And uh, she starts shouting. She shouts three words in sequence <laughs> uh, off the top of, at the top of her lungs oh, while, while while her mech literally Fucking starts sh- stomping Shingetsu's mech to death. She shouts uh, in sequence uh, adrenaline, <laughs> dopamine, and then endorphine. <laughs> Uh, while her mech is just pounding, <laughs> just pounding the shit out of Viola Cots. <laughs> and finally, yes, just lifts, lifts and gets his mech completely delimbed at this point, oh up, strangling it, strangling her to death. It's and like, this is the happiest day of my life, I'm finally killing yes. you. <laughs> yes, it's so good, it's so good. Like, it's, like, she, like, there are, like, there are, like, there are now real tears in, in, in Anna's eyes. Like, she's, like, Anna, like, in this moment, like, Anna, her hair is down, there are tears in her eyes, like, you know, like, Anna is looking the most beautiful she ever has in this show. <laughs> like, imagine... Like, imagine, uh, uh, walk with me here. Imagine the way you hope that, imagine the, the way you hope your future wife looks on your wedding day. Coming, coming, the fucking coming, life out coming, coming down the aisle, tears of joy streaming down her face. Her cheeks are flushed with anticipation, her eyes full of love. And she is saying, this is the happiest moment of her life as she is strangling you to death with her giant <laughs> robot. Like... She says, uh, sadly, Christ. sadly, Anna gets the, the makes the carnal mistake of maybe model walking too long because she says, with tears in her eyes again, never looked so beautiful that she will never forget this moment for as long as she lives and prepares to finish off uh, Shingetsu. And then Shingetsu being the fucking sneaky main, piece of shit she character. is and the main character uh, reveals that she was slowly like her mech has like a tail attached to its head and like was slowly kind of slinking the tail behind Anna and uh, pierces her through the heart, hollowing out her chest cavity and shattering the family crystal in the process. And uh, Anna's uh, spirit is like completely obliterated and then reabsorbed into the Magia Canatus. And uh, one more gem lights up and we are one step closer to unlocking its full power. Uh, fuck. This fucking show. So good. So fucking good. Uh, Anna was robbed. Right. I don't know. Mayday uh, was robbed. Anna was robbed. I, again, I'm glad to say that I had been keeping my eye on Grand Belm pre release. Yeah, yeah. This this show is. Is she gets to the main character? Or is it, I thought it was the pink character. Uh, she's a main character. Or she, or she, she the, uh, like, she the, yeah. the Homer to the Madoka. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's a good. Yes, that is the, the proper right. description. Yes, art now, then that makes sense. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I, I just want to say shout outs to Anna's VA, Yoko yeah. Hikasa. She deserves a, an Oscar or whatever the fuck is the anime equivalent because she is like going full Noriko here. Like she is screaming her voice out. I would not be surprised if after, like, oh, apparently God. they said that like. Uh, apparently, like Gunbuster, apparently this episode was the last episode she recorded. So just empty the so, tank. Like, uh, might actually tank. be dead then. 
Uh, yeah. That's so the thing that, like... Because Yoko Hikasa most famously is Mio from k and usually Yes. Is, uh... Well, let me tell you, fucking... I hope she gets more... I can't... She. I hope she gets more roles like this in the future, because, goddamn, she... She really sells. It. She really like oh, you, like she really sells. Like like it's easy to like say, oh, a-, a character hates B character, but she really sells. Like how how much Anna hates Shingetsu from the depths of her heart. Like like every fiber of her being is just pure spite for this character, and it's so it's so good. It's so fun to watch. I'm not gonna go for, as far as say Anna did nothing wrong. But Anna was undeniably the one you were rooting for in this fight, even if you know, even if you knew how it was going to go. Right. Like, she was just hustling so hard. You know, she was the hard work in this, like, hard work first effort, like, conflict. <laughs> right. Like, she had guts. She had hustle. Like, she got, every, she got knocked down 10 times and got up 11. You know, she just never stopped fighting. It was, it was so good. This show is so good. Oh. This show is. <laughs> This show is my anime of the year so far. I so <laughs> I, I I did want to mention, and I know we're running long here, but I, I, we got to talk. We got to bring this in. Uh, I, I happened to see just out of pure coincidence, I happened to get a clip of the battle from last episode pop up in my YouTube recommendations because Crunchyroll has put up some clips here and there. Sure, right, yeah, sure, sure. And it was very cool, but I'm kind of surprised you guys aren't more like put off by the art style. Why would we? Like, it's... <laughs> like, that's a thing. Like, it's like... Yes, you know, it's the SD mechs, it's the cutesy girls, but, like... Cause it, yeah, the, this the, is a mech show. It's, it's got the spirit of a mecha. I feel like, like the fight choreography in the show is actually like, really good. Yeah, like, the heart of a mecha anime beats in this, in, in this anime, you know? It's... Okay. But I'm curious, Joe, what do you mean? Like, do you... I, like, I, why, why are you it's surprised? It's just... It's... It, it feels... And again, I have very little context for this because I've only seen like two clips of the show ever. But I feel like the art style maybe feels disconnected from the what's actually happening. Uh, I mean, but and and I mean, I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm out of everybody in the Glorio crew, I'm one of the most tolerant of cutesy little girl designs, right? But like, it just seems. I mean, I think like I mean this. I think you know. I think this is a great example of, like, at the end of the day, like, you know, you're right. Like, the designs are, you know, whatever, you know. I mean, I've really grown. Uh, the, the mech designs have really grown on me. The character designs are still kind of eh, whatever. Right. But, like, it speaks to, like, how, I'm not going to say the character writing is good, but it is, like, uh, compelling. You know? I, watched, like, I watched Princess Principal. I can watch Grand Belm. Like... Yeah, like, the characters are likable. Their motivations are likable. They're... You know, in the cases of characters like Anna, they are fun to watch on screen. You know the, and yeah, like you know, I think this is, it's just the fight choreography is so good. You know, in many, I mean, here's here, here's here's a good way to describe uh, to put it. Like, I don't really like the way Gundam Build Fighters looks, but like the fights themselves have so much like heart and soul to them that like that really overrides everything else. You know, it's just like like. Grand Belm is another show that has a similar like understanding that like oh like mechs are not people mechs are mechs and it's fun to watch mechs get fucked up you know because they can get fucked up in a way people can't and you can and like, I think cut that, their like, arms off you can stab them through the leg and punch them in the face you can yeah like you can do things that you cannot physically do to human beings and like break their they, like, break their pieces yes and like I think that like for for whatever Grand Belm's quote unquote faults might be with like it's uh, you know it's it's designs or it's aesthetic or maybe in some ways even it, it's writing to some degree like the sensibilities that it evokes and that it holds in its heart are so appealing and so well done that like i have no problem at all enjoying and like enjoying the things that i see in front right. of me okay yeah i'm i'm not saying you guys shouldn't i just found it was inter- find it interesting because at first glance, I, was, I think you, I would think that would be a, a barrier for you for you guys and for probably a lot of people. I mean, I think I think I think we were initially skeptical, you know, of the SD designs and the very cutesy characters. Well, speak for like, yourself. Oh please! <laughs> you think those SD designs? You think those SD designs were any guarantee from the get go? No, of course, they're not a guarantee. But when is anything ever a guarantee? <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. So, like, you know, 
I think that like I think it's entirely like reasonable for better or worse for people to be skeptical of the show because like like this show like in terms of its sensibilities should be animated like a Getter Robo or a Mazinger Z. You know, it should it, it, it's the kind of show where its sensibilities are better suited for like a very like, you know, bold outline, sketchy right. line work style, you know, where like, you know, you know, hot blooded men and all that stuff. But like it makes it work. It makes it work for what it is. And I wouldn't trade any aspect of it out, you know? <laughs> I I'm enjoying it immensely. All right. Yeah, I just the the thought that was uh I wanted to hear your guys' perspective on that, but I guess Yeah. And again, fucking please it's I gonna work. I'm begging you people, watch this <laughs> show. It's fucking doing horribly in terms of the, like pre orders, the Blu ray. Right. I mean like the me- the mech people don't like the designs and the magical girl people don't like the mechs. Yeah, it's like just give it a chance. Like it this show, it it's got so much heart. Like these people truly, you can tell people working on this show really love what they're doing, and they're putting their all into it. And mm-hmm. again, the writer of a uh, place further than the universe, or number one anime like, of last they, year. You know, I'm not saying got to give them money, you know, but like they deserve, they at least deserve your review, your recog- <laughs> their, your recognition. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I've, I have slowly seen the uh, Grand Boom watching fan base. Like, <laughs> I, I have seen it pop up a little bit more. Become like you know, say good things about it. Yeah. You know, like the first few episodes, all I saw was people being like, "Oh, what's with the mechs? I'm like this looks dumb." And or but like, like I didn't le- know there'd be mechs. But like lately, I've seen the comments be along the lines of "Oh shit!" <laughs> or "Ernesto," <laughs> etc. Yeah. Like people are getting into it. I think. Yeah. Uh, I hope so. I really do. I I think. I, I I try not to hype the show as like oh this is like the next fucking Gurren Lagann or something no. but like it's just it's a really it's a really fun really well executed like you know just mecha action right. romp and uh, it seems yeah. I think it just succeeds at everything. I think we it said this last it time it, it it seems to it seems to get mecha anime like what people what what yeah. people want and, out of it. Yeah, and and the last thing I'll say, the thing I will say, uh, you know, just to get ahead of myself here in case things really do take a turn, I am still definitely looking forward to the show. I am curious what direction it takes now because we have lost our primary villain, or at least our most uh, centralizing villain. Uh, We are left now in a situation where we have, in the Battle Royale, there are like three protagonists and only one villain left in the Battle Royale. That right, last right. villain, however, has a lot of promise. She has shown a lot of she's shown a lot of hustle, a lot of good shit eating grins in the last <laughs> few episodes. Mm-hmm. But uh, I hope that she can kind of pick up the mantle where uh, where Anna left off. You know, because is uh, it going to end with uh, Monica like I, versus Homura in the end? Is that where we're headed? I hope probably, so. Probably. I I hope that's the direction this takes. Like the characters literally said, I mean, one of the characters literally said, "I hope we don't have to fight each other," which means they're definitely other. going to and fight the other each other. Said, <laughs> Well, I, I was hoping so, but then the other kidder said, no, we definitely won't fight each other. And, you know, that could go one of two yeah. ways, you know, but uh, I hope they yeah. fight each other. I really do. I need to see fucking Lily Black again. I, I need to. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> next time I'll set aside 35 minutes for Grand Belm discussion and uh, <laughs> we'll try to time things out better. I even We even cut stuff and still went way over here, but... Uh... I mean, we might not get as many fights from here on out because, like, we still have, like, what, five, six episodes left and only one main villain, so I don't know how many fights left uh, we're actually going to yeah. get. Who knows how it'll go? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's hard we to tell. We still have half the season left, so, I mean, we'll see. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it then for this episode. Uh, we'll get to our final housekeeping here. Just uh, check us out at theglorialblog.com. Follow us on Twitter at the Glorio Blog. I think we already shilled our podcasts in the beginning, so we don't have to go through all of them again. But you can follow. Or his King of the Kaiju is uh, has a new episode about Ghidorah. Yes, the three headed monster. I have not had a chance to listen to that yet, but I definitely will soon. And you should all listen as well. And you can, of course, find our podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Podbean, YouTube, um, and uh, yeah, check those out and. That's it. We'll catch everybody next time. (laughs) Later.